Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars figure review. Today we're going to take a look at some more figures from the Star Wars Rebels animated TV series and in this review we're going to take a look at the eagerly anticipated Mission Series 2 pack featuring two very cool characters who are of course these guys, Hera Syndulla and the Stormtrooper Commander. Now you may remember in my last review I gave you a look at Sabine Wren and the Imperial Stormtrooper from the Mission Series 2 pack line and that in its own right was a very sought after pack, you know it was eagerly anticipated just like this one but I think this particular set is probably equally if not more so eagerly anticipated and that's mainly because Hera is of course the final figure that we need to complete the crew of the Ghost. Uh, Star Wars Rebels has been on television for a good number of months now and quite frankly the fact that it's taken this long to get Hera into our collections is a bit of a collecting travesty. Um, don't get me wrong, it was worth the wait, but, you know, she is a core character who should have definitely been released, you know, sort of first. Uh, but we'll get onto that in just a little bit. Before we do, as always, we're going to take a look at the packaging that these guys come in. And once again, nothing new really going on. This is the traditional look for the Star Wars Rebels action figure line. We have the Star Wars Rebel logo at the top of the card, and we have the Stormtrooper acting as the main card back design. On either side of the box we do have an image of Hera Syndulla and on the other side a picture of the Stormtrooper Commander. If we come around the back once again we have another Star Wars Rebels logo accompanied by an image of Hera in action during Rebels. Uh, in this image we see Hera behind the controls of either the Ghost or the Phantom. Can't quite tell which one but either way she's being pursued by TIE Fighters. And just below that we have a description of the two characters included as well as some other Mission Series packs available in the range. Now, once again, the Mission Series and Saga Legends line does blend the Saga and the Rebels animated series together into one action figure collection, so not only can you collect figures from Rebels, but also from the movies and the Clone Wars as well. So as you can see, in this particular wave, we do get Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper Disguise and Princess Leia from Episode 4 A New Hope, and we also have two other Mission Series packs available from the Rebels animated TV series. One of which features Kanan and Ezra in his Imperial Cadet uniform from the episode Breaking Ranks. And another very cool uh, Army Builder 2-pack which does of course feature the Stormtrooper and the TIE Fighter Pilot. Now I have reviewed both of these figures, the TIE Pilot on the single card and the Stormtrooper as part of the mission series where he's been packed with Zeb and Sabine respectively. So once again, as always, there's the uh, Star Wars Rebels playlist featured on my channel where you can check all of those reviews out. So that uh, will wrap up the packaging that these two figures come in. Now let's take a look at the figures themselves. And as always, we'll begin with the most popular character. And in this case, it's Hera Syndulla. Now, before I jump into sort of the details of the overall figure, I do want to give you a bit of background into Hera's character. Now, not only is Hera the ace pilot of the Ghost crew, but she also has some connections to a character from the Clone Wars. Now, for those of you that remember season one, you'll probably remember in that epi or in that season, uh, there was a series of episodes known as the Ryloth Trilogy. Now, this was a story arc which centered around the planet Re Ryloth and the Twi'lek species, and during that story arc, um, a character by the name of Cam Syndulla popped up. Now, he was a resistance fighter on the side of the Republic, fighting the Separatist forces, and it's quite interesting to point out that Cam is the father of Hera. So, it'll be really interesting to see whether or not uh, Cam pops up in Star Wars Rebels, uh, after we saw the trailer for Season 2 at Star Wars Celebration, um, and we've seen the return of you know, many Clone Wars characters such as Ahsoka and, spoiler alert, uh, Captain Rex and Hondo Anaka. It'll be really interesting to see if Cam pops up you know, as part of the ever-growing Rebel Alliance and uh, whether there's any actual interaction between these two characters. That'll be uh, really interesting to see. With that aside, the figure itself is not actually a bad one. Um, to me personally, it captures the look and essence of the character seen on screen. To me, it's a faithful representation um, of the CGI model used in the series. The facial sculpt is a little bit off. It's not 100% accurate, but you can tell who it's supposed to be. 
Uh, the only thing that really does put me off about the head sculpt is the very vibrant pink lips, which as you can see do stand out uh, quite vibrantly. Um, and I dare say this has been done really to, just to set the facial sculpt apart so it doesn't all just blend into to one piece. You know, just to add some highlights in there. Uh, the rest of the head is very nice. As you can see, you've got the goggles sculpted to the top of the head. You've got the leku there with some skin texture printing and all the appropriate details in Hera's flight suit. Now one minor gripe that I do have with this particular figure is the fact that while the paint applications seem to be much crisper and much cleaner than they have been in previous Mission Series packs, uh, there is one slightly major paint application missing from this figure, and that's the fly harnesses around the legs. Now Hasbro know that they're there because they've sculpted them in place, but for whatever reason they failed to paint them. Now I understand that the Mission Series is a budget line, um, you know, two figures for the price of $9.99. In today's collecting climate, we can't really expect much for that price. But for whatever reason, you know, this shouldn't have been missed out in my opinion. It would have made the figure pop and stand out a little bit more. And, you know, to sculpt them but not paint them just seems a little bit ignorant on, uh, on Hasbro's part to me. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that respect. But with the rest of the figure, it's actually not too bad. That's my only major issue. Um, another slight complaint that I have, it's not a, a massive deal breaker, but she, as you can see, she does come included with a very small blaster pistol, which I believe is a brand new sculpt to the figure, but sadly there's nowhere to store it. Now she does have a holster sculpted to the side of her boot, but as you can see, it's very, very small and it's sealed as well, it's just one solid sculpted piece, so even if it was big enough to hold her, a blaster, you know, it's it's sealed shut, so there's no way of actually making that function, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, I understand that this figure is, you know, quite petite, quite small, and uh, very, very thin, um, so it would have been a little bit tricky to get a fully functioning holster on the boot, but, uh, yeah, that's my only major issue in terms of the accessory. The rest of the figure, as I said, looks really, really good. The proportions are accurate to the uh, character seen on screen, the rest of the details aren't too bad, and the likeness is pretty solid as well. So, all in all, no major complaints. Um, obviously, increased articulation would have been a plus, but accepting the Saga Legends and Mission Series for what they are, um, it's not hard to look past the articulation and just appreciate the, uh, the detail and sculpt of this figure. Um, while we're on the subject of articulation, this figure does come with the typical Mission Series 5 points. She comes with a swivel at the head, she has swivels at the shoulders and swivels at the hips. So most importantly, she can indeed be seated uh, at the controls of the Phantom Vehicle, which has been released by Hasbro. I haven't picked it up myself, um, but, you know, she can sit inside the vehicle, which is one of the main issues or main focal points of this particular figure. Hopefully at some point down the line, Hasbro will release a 3 3 quarter inch scale ghost vehicle for this figure and the rest of the ghost crew, but in the meantime, Hera is a nice completion of the crew of the Star Wars Rebels TV series. Now, if you want to check out Hera alongside the rest of the Rebels crew, you know, Kanan and Sabine and company, then you can indeed follow me on Instagram, where I've posted quite a few pictures of uh, some of these Rebels figures, so feel free to check those out. There's a link in the video description. So moving on from Hera, let's take a look at the Stormtrooper Commander, and here he is. Now, this is the basic Stormtrooper, really, that we've seen throughout the Star Wars Rebels line. Obviously, he's been updated to feature a shoulder pauldron to distinguish him as a Stormtrooper Commander, but for the rest of the figure, he is exactly the same as the Stormtroopers that we've previously reviewed. Now, the shoulder pauldron is a brand new sculpt, and it's non-removable. You know, previous shoulder pauldrons have been able to slide out from the side, you've been able to pop off the head and remove the pauldron that way, but with this particular figure, it's sealed in place, so you can't really diversify your ranks by removing the pauldron on this figure. Needless to say, Hasbro have really milked the Rebels Stormtrooper sculpt so far, they've released it in a variety of different ways, you know, on a basic card, in two or three Mission Series 2 packs, so... Uh, you know, if you haven't picked a, a basic Rebel Stormtrooper up yet, then you're really uh, out of the loop with the, the Rebels figures because they're pretty much everywhere at the moment. Uh, as you can see, obviously, the shoulder pauldron is an orange colour, which obviously indicates his rank. And on the rest of the figure, just under the arms, as you can see, a black strap 
has been painted in place. Now I'm under the impression that this is meant to represent the strap that holds the pauldron in place. It would seem a little bit weird to be there if not. Um, so again, that's a, a nice little bit of attention to detail on Hasbro's part, I suppose. They didn't have to go to that effort to put that in there, uh, but for whatever reason they chose to, so no major complaints. Uh, the pauldron and that little extra bit of paint are the only thing that really distinguish this guy from the standard Stormtrooper. The only other thing to point out is the fact that with the previous Stormtrooper figures, we've had a sort of yellow tint on the arms and on various other parts of the armour. Whereas with this particular figure, it's one consistent colour and it's a very nice vibrant white, which is really, really good. In terms of accessories, the Stormtrooper Commander does feature a brand new E11 Blaster Rifle, which is really nicely sculpted. And in terms of articulation, again, he does come with the typical five points. So we have a swivel at the head, a swivel at the shoulders. Uh, obviously, with this arm, uh, the posability is a little bit restricted by the shoulder pauldron. Um, and he also has swivels at the hips as well. So all in all, decent articulation for what we've come to expect from the Saga Legends and Mission Series waves. Uh, obviously, again, increased articulation would be awesome with these figures. Um, but 5 points is starting to become the norm, but I must admit it, it's not as noticeable and it's not as painful as it was when the line first debuted. Um, the sculpts and paint applications seem to be uh, increasing in terms of quality, so as long as all that sort of stuff is evident, uh, I don't particularly mind the 5 points of articulation, you know, for the most part. These two figures are just going to be stood on my shelf, uh, displayed as they are in this shot. Um, so it's no major issue that they don't do the splits and bend at the knees and all that sort of stuff. It's not a major concern for me, but I do understand the argument that super articulation is the best way to go. But again, for the price that these two figures retail for, you really can't complain for what you get. Definitely get your value for money's worth, and if you want to pick these guys up for yourself, as always, there's a link down below in the video description where you can head over to our friends at staractionfigures.co.uk now, I believe at the time of filming this video, this set is currently out of stock, you know, again, due to its high demand, uh, but I do have it on good word that in the next month or two from filming this video, so around June, July time, um, this particular set should be in stock in decent quantities. So again, feel free to check out that link in the video description to purchase this one for yourself. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this review once again on Harrison Doola and the Stormtrooper Commander from Star Wars Rebels. An awesome pack and really happy to finally have this one in my collection. So that's going to wrap it up for this review. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be back to give you a look at some more Star Wars figures and other collectibles in the very near future. I've got a ton of Lego to give you a look at over the course of some of my next videos. And then we'll be back to take a look at some Saga Legends and Black Series 6 inch figures as well. So there's plenty to look forward to here on the channel and I hope you'll stay tuned. So until then, as always, thank you for watching, keep collecting and may the force be with you.